Hi, this is Hector, and today we're going to talk about why we love Procreate. Now, you know, truth be told, these programs, they're not alike, and some of them, you know, they look really super hard, but Procreate, for some reason, it just doesn't. You can create amazing art, and you can do this in all levels. And I think Procreate was designed with that in mind. In fact, when you go to the Apple homepage and you tap on the iPad icon, you see what it's capable of. I mean, this is amazing artwork. And in fact, uh, this is the gallery. So what do we do in gallery? Well, we look at things in preview mode. We organize things. There's these hidden menus that we can do. Well, we can share things. We can delete things. We can import things. We can just go ahead and do all these different things. But keep this in mind. You don't have to know how to do all of these. You just have to know how to do some of them. If it says Procreate Gallery, gestures can be used. Now, that's where I'm going to highlight some of the features that some of these sections have. Now, through my ramblings, I've kind of covered like full frame previews, importing, you know, uh, sorting, duplicating, you know, that sort of thing. Now, here's the deal. This is also what you get in your canvas or you can use an existing canvas too. And that's why I think this program, it's designed really well because in all these other programs, all you see are buttons everywhere. And it kind of makes you feel like you're missing out on something. It's kind of this unspoken pressure into just learning the app first, and then we'll get to that artwork. And we can see once we go into Canvas that that's not the case. Uh, the Canvas design, it's different from others. It really is. Because once we tap something open, the next logical thing could be, uh, we, we may need color, right? So the icons, they suggest a workflow. So in this case, it's color. And... And there's a classic module. Now, that's a module that probably a lot of people are familiar with. And so far, no pressure, right? It's super simple so far. Now, we're probably going to go to layers, and we tap there. And we, usually, we either going to work on the layer, we're going to create a new layer, which we just did. Now, if we have had drawn on the layer, we might need those next two icons. But since we didn't, tap on brush. And brush said also suggest a workflow. Typically, people sketch and then just go on from there. Next step is probably going to get the size and the opacity of the brush. And that's on the left-hand side. So what's a sidebar do? Well, one of two things. It reduces clutter, right? And uh, who doesn't love that? And it also suggests that maybe your left hand does the adjustments. Of course, here I'm fighting the force here. I'm using my right hand, but you can't always do everything they want you to do, right? <laughs> okay. And now the other thing is this coloring perk, which is really cool. Uh, once you open coloring, you just drag it out and you can just place it anywhere in the canvas. If you use palettes, that's okay too, because you can just tap on palettes and there they are. Now, I know it's kind of an advanced feature, but I think it really helps out the new people. It really does. Now, the number one question I'm asked quite a bit is, how do you save your canvas? It's really super simple. I know it doesn't have any buttons there that says save, save as, and all that good stuff. All you have to do is just tap on gallery and it's saved. Now, technically, Procreate, it auto-saves it, so there you go. And by not having all these crazy menu systems all over the place, you're able to learn at your own pace. There's no pressure to catch up. Now, you're probably wondering, can I use this professionally? Yeah, you can. In fact, there's a lot of advanced features in Procreate. Let's go to Color Panels. Now, if you go to Values, you can get the exact color you need for whatever project you're working on. And there's a panel for Color Theory, Palettes, Classic, and for a more modern way of choosing color, color disk. Oh, and here's a tip. If you think that disk is too small, well, you can always expand it by doing an outward pinch just like this. And now all you got to do is just choose your own color. So now let's go to layers and just tap on the end. And that's where you find your opacity and your blend modes. Tap anywhere on that layer and you get a side menu that's going to have all kinds of good stuff I know you're going to be using. So we're going to do this thing called a handoff. And we're just basically going to hand off a current brush. So in our brush section, we're using hearts. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to eraser. And we're just going to do a long press. We're going to hold it for about a second or so. And the current brush is going to transfer over. And there you go. That's kind of a nice little trick. So now we're going to go to brushes. Go ahead and just tap there. And any brush that's already open, tap it once again. Because this is going to open up Brush Studio. Now, Brush Studio, that's the place where we can modify a brush or we can design our own custom brush. Now, this is great if you have your own style and you need a specific type of brush because 
you know, program may not have it and you can't find it. So just go ahead and make it. Now up at the top, there's a selection tool and there's a move tool. Now, if you need to precisely move something, scale something, transform something, whether it's a part of a layer, an entire layer or an entire group, that's the place for it. So now let's go to adjustments. This is the place where you adjust the appearance, whether it's going to be an HSB, hue, saturation, and brightness, or you're going to go back and play with the curve tones. This is the place for it. Next, it's going to be actions. Now, actions is the place where you basically do something to your canvas or layers for layers. Uh, for example, uh, if you wanted to share it, it's right there. Uh, if you wanted to go ahead and start playing with the sizing of it, that's where you do it. But in this case, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do a drawing guide. I'm going to put a grid on it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go there, just tap it once, add a drawing guide. And now you can do a bunch of other stuff. But all I'm going to do is just tap on done. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the sidebar for the brush. Now, sometimes we have a size that it just fits our style and we want to keep it. We want to create a preset. All we have to do is just tap on that plus sign. And once we do that, it saves it for us. Pretty cool, huh? Now, did you notice that we covered the same ground? We started with color and we worked our way over to that sidebar, you know, the brush sidebar. And uh, I know we didn't cover those advanced features, the ones on the upper left, the move tool, selection tool and all that other good stuff. Now, let me ask you this. Did you feel the pressure, the pressure to catch up? Well, probably not because, you know, they're so nicely hidden that the only time you're going to miss them is when you're going to start needing them, right? Oh, and before I forget, hand gestures, that's the big one. Uh, two finger tap to undo, three finger tap to redo, uh, three finger swipe down to do the copy and paste stuff. Uh, you can move your canvas around too when you're drawing and that comes in really super handy. And this is why we love it, because it motivates us to create. We don't feel pressured into learning the app because you see all these menus all over the place. You know, this app was nicely designed. It was designed with the artist in mind. Anyway, if you like this, please like. And if you have subscribed, please subscribe. As always, thanks for hanging out. Gotta go. Bye. Okay. Oh, you know, before you go, this is what you can compare and procreate with. Here's Photoshop. You have all sorts of icons to the left, to the right, to the top, and this is Affinity Designer. Same idea. Icons to the left, icons to the right, and some at the top. And uh, in Affinity, it just doesn't make sense where they're at. But anyway, there you go.